fix your blood pressure. <laughs> Keep these dead faces away from you. It's contagious. <laughs> this is serious. So you've got to watch your countenance, watch your face, have an uplifted expression, watch your body posture. All of these things affect you psychically. You've got to be the kind of person that you are fearless. Fearless. Folk leave fearless people alone. <laughs> there are some people walk through a neighborhood and every dog in the neighborhood would bark at them. <laughs> but there are some people come through and ain't nobody gonna mess with this. <laughs> You are unstoppable. And because you are unstoppable, because you've got power that you haven't even begun to use yet, you owe it to yourself to release your brakes. How many of you have had the experience of pulling out of your driveway and you're mashed on the accelerator and the car was just going, uh, and couldn't move, and you mashed harder and it couldn't move, and then you discovered you had your emergency brakes on. <laughs> And then you release those emergency brakes and it goes, choo! Have you ever had that experience before? Most of us go through life with our brakes on, holding back, not giving all that we have, not sharing all of ourselves. Most of us go to our grave still holding on rather than releasing it. What are some of those things that, that keep us from releasing it? Because of past experiences, past defeats, past pain. We look back, well, it didn't work out then. It probably won't work out now. <laughs> Many people get confused their performances with who they are. They are. I was reading Pat Riley, the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to like this quote here. <laughs> After the trailblazers had blown them out of the water, and I'm sure he said this last night, they asked him, how do you feel? He said, tonight we were exposed for what we are right now. You see? That if my speech tonight doesn't work, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad speaker. It means that what I did didn't work tonight. And I've got to separate what I do from who I am. And I've got another shot. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet. And it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter about the things that you've done that you feel guilty about. If you wouldn't do it today, you're convicting an innocent person. You've been reborn to a new state of consciousness. And as they say, if we knew better, we would do better. And so you begin to decide... I'm not going to be denied. I remember and I was telling someone and they asked me, would you repeat that again? I was interested in going into broadcasting. I'm adopted. And that was my key out. I wanted to make my mama proud of me. I was, a pr I was very much appreciative of what she's done for my brother and sister and I. And that was my way out. And I went over to a radio station, asked a guy that, and told him that I was interested in broadcasting. He looked at me in my straw hat and my overalls. He said, you have any broadcasting background? I said, no, sir, I don't. What do you do? I cut grass. <laughs> Young ladies asked me what kind of work I do, and I was working on a garbage truck. I say, well, I'm a sanitary technician. <laughs> he said, we don't have any job for you. I decided that that was something I was going to do. I decided I'm unstoppable. I'm going to go up and hit. I'm going to do this. I started going to the radio station every day, developing a relationship with the people that were doing what I wanted to do. And that's what I encourage you to do. Where, whatever area you want to go and find people that are doing it the way you want to do it and develop a relationship with them. When I decided to go in this area, I wrote letters to Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, to Zig Ziglar, to Dennis Waitley, all of the giants in this area. And I said, this is something I want to do. I've been following your career. Would you help me? Dr. Norman Vincent Peale answered my letter, did an article on me, wrote about me in the most recent book that he issued and done many broadcasts about me. I'd wanted to develop a relationship and rapport with those people that were achieving those things that I wanted to achieve. 
By the same token, I would go to the radio station and I developed a relationship with the guys and they used me as an errand boy when they needed some food or someone to go pick up the entertainers that came into town. Temptation singing, my girl, Jerry Butler singing for your precious love, Sam Cooke singing, darling, you send me. I would pick up the entertainers at the airport and driving around in the disc jockeys, big Cadillacs, didn't have any driver's license, but I was acting like I had some. Every day I used to go home and work on my communication skills, developing myself. It was Whitney Young, he said, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. Start working and developing yourself now and prepare yourself for what it is that you want because you expect to get it. And when the disc jockeys were in the control room, I would go in and watch them and develop a trust level and they would let me stay and I would watch and observe them working the controls. When you want something out of life, don't worry about how you're going to get it. How is none of your business. The most difficult thing that it is, is to hold the vision. It's to hold the vision. So there I was at the radio station. A guy was on the air and he started to drink by the name of Rock. I was outside the window looking at him and watching. Hungry. And ready saying, drink, rock, drink. (laughs) Pretty soon, the phone rang. It was the general manager. I said, hello? He said, Les, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. He said, rock can't finish his program. He's slurring his words. I said, I know. Can you work the controls until one of the other disc jockeys come in? Would you call them? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up. I said, now he must be thinking I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra, said, y'all come out on the front porch and turn up the radio. I'm about to come on the air. (laughs) I waited about 15 minutes. I called him back. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. (laughs) He said, well, why don't you go in there and work the controls until they get there? And don't say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. I couldn't wait to sit down at that turntable, Mustafa. I said, look out, this is me, LB, Triple P, Les Brown, your platter, playing Papa. There were none before me and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, and indubitably qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. <laughs> Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, you've got to be hungry. (laughs) Well, y'all something else, you hear me? (laughs) You want to be persistent about what it is that you want to achieve. Alexander Graham Bell said, what this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man or a woman is in that state of mind in which he or she knows exactly what he or she wants and is fully determined not to quit until they find it. When our children are learning how to walk, how many times will your baby attempt to walk and fall and you just say, just sit down, don't try anymore, you've fallen 20 times. Just sit down somewhere, busting your lip and everything, getting in folks' way. When will a baby walk? It will walk when it walks. That's when it will walk. Les, when will you be known nationally as the motivator? I will be known when I'm known. That's when I'll be known. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it four or five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line where if they had the determination just to keep on knocking. It's a funny thing about life. If you're home one day and someone is knocking on the door, 
And you say, I don't want to be bothered today. And if that person just keep on knocking, can you believe that fool's still knocking? Pretty soon you say, what is it? What do you want? And that's how you've got to be about your dream. Some people, well, I guess ain't nobody home. (laughs) I knocked on the door, but nobody came. I heard the television on and people were moving around, but I guess opportunity probably went out the back door. Oh, no, no, no. See, life is not just that simple. It's not that cut and dry. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness, because they're casual about life. And when you are casual about life, you will end up a casualty. Life is serious business. So I encourage you to be persistent. To not decide that, well, I've done the best I can. I guess I I just can't have it. Don't make that decision. Many of us make premature decisions about ourselves. Calvin Coolidge said something. A man who was a president that was not known for his eloquence or making any historical decisions. But something he wrote about persistence. He says, press on. Nothing can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. The world is full of unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education alone will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. There's a person that is the embodiment of persistence and determination. A person who decided that some time ago that I'm not going to take anything to my grave with me. I'm going to use myself up and I'm going to give and give and give until my last breath. This summer, I'm going to be working for her and with her doing training, teaching young people techniques and strategies on how to manifest their personal greatness, teaching them techniques and strategies that will change them at the subconscious level, changing their value systems and let them see the major role they can play in society. Let's give Mrs. Rosa Parks a round of applause, if you please. in the presence of greatness. Mrs. Fox, people over here couldn't see you. Would you come up? Could you? She's such a beautiful person. you to see Mrs. Parks and Mrs. Elaine Steele about the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development. If you're interested in your children participating in that, they have some information over here to share with you. It is just fascinating and just a blessing to, to have this woman when a lot of folk who are giving up, and here this year she celebrated her 75th birthday and still has a dream of being an instrument of change. And there is a Rosa Parks in all of us who made a, a, a decision at one point in time, standing on the platform of oughtness, as Immanuel Kant talks about in a book called Critique of Pure Reasoning, that there are certain things we know we ought to do. We just know it. We owe it to ourselves and those around us. I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know what your goals are. But let me leave this with you. Mine is to be the best son that I can to my mother. Mine is to be the best father that I can to my children. And to be the best servant that I can to humanity. And the best man that I can to the woman that I've decided to share my life with. 
Whatever your goals are, I know that you can achieve them. Here's something that I'd like to leave with you. It says simply that if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opportunity,